So we are talking about multiplying rational numbers, okay? So basically it's multiplying fractions. That's what it is. Fractions. Yes, it's right here. So how do you multiply fractions? It's pretty simple stuff. Not very complicated. The only thing that gets complicated is when you have to um, simplify the fractions. But to multiply fractions, and I'm expecting everyone to write this thing down, right? So if you want to multiply fractions, you multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. You know what a numerator is, right? As a top part of the fraction and the denominator is the bottom, right? So to multiply a fraction, if I have A over B, right, times C over D, this is a fraction, it becomes A times C over B times D, right? How come the only one that's writing something down is like Dexter and Kenzie? Nobody else has their stuff open, they're looking at me. So make sure you write this down because it's going to help you, right? Especially when we get to like simplifying fractions. So for example, if I have 3 over 4, you 2. I need you to write this down. 3 over 4, right, times 1 over 2. That becomes, that becomes 3 times 1, right, over 4 times 2, which is technically 3 over 8. This is how you multiply a fraction. You put the denominators and you multiply them together and the numerators, you multiply them together, right? So it's very simple stuff. Now, we're gonna first talk about how to multiply positive fractions, positive, okay? So all are positive. So if I have one over six times two over three, that becomes what? Two over 18, right? Because it's one times two, six times plus two over 18 now. What do I need to do now? I have two over 18, am I done? No. What needs to be done? Hmm? Simplify, right? Sim simplify, so that becomes now part of our vocabulary. We have to simplify, all fractions must be simplified. Because once you get to like calculus or pre-calculus, if you don't simplify your fractions, your teacher assumes that you didn't do it when you were in the lower stages of your mathematic career, and he gives you, he takes some points off. So you gotta make sure you simplify every fraction, right? So how do I simplify this fraction? I have two over 18 by two, right? So each number here is divided by two, so I get what? If I divide this by two, and divide this by two, it gets me one over what? One over nine, so that becomes one over nine, okay? One over nine. So two over 18 is basically one over nine, all right? Now I want you to try this here. 1 half times 4 tenths, and I want you to tell me what you get when you simplify that fraction. 1 over 2 times 4 over 10. Did you shift all the desk floor? Did I shift all the... I feel like it's closer now. I didn't shift anything. Yeah, I Yeah. Oh, the first one is a five over four. That's uh, you did one times four is what four, right? Yeah, four. And what twenty, right? Wait. So if you, I, I wrote the wrong thing. That's okay. And then you can do um, two. Two. Five. Of, what's the biggest number that goes into four and twenty? Four. Four, right? You divide it by four, divide it by four. Oh yeah. You get what one over five, yeah. right? One fifth. So that should give you one fifth. All right. Now what about five over twelve? times six over 12. Mm -hmm. Five over 12 times six over 12. Um, so what's a good thing to do here before you even do this fraction? What can you do to make it simple before you even like Divide this by what? What goes into six, that goes into 12? Three, yeah. well, let's go a little further, right? Six. six. So that makes it simple, right? Mm -hmm. So if I divide this by six, and this by six, I get five over 12 still times one half, right? <coughs> so that way I don't have to deal with gigantic numbers. 
Because I'm, I'm trying to really make it easy before I even like proceed to, the, uh, to multiplying them, right? So that becomes five over 24, all right? Does that make sense? No. Why? I'm not dividing. I, I divided here six over twelve. Before you multiply, yet I want you. I want to simplify this fraction. Okay. I have six over twelve, right? Oh. Before I even do it, I know that I can divide it by six, and this by six, so I get one half. That way, I have a smaller fraction, and then I can go five over twelve times one over two. That makes sense now. All right. All right. Now. Now, how do you multiply this? You can simplify before and after multiplication. Yeah, before. So sometimes it's easier to do. Exactly. You can multiply and then simplify or simplify before you multiply. You have multiple options. Again, I don't impose anything. Whichever you're comfortable doing. Okay? Now look here. Now we're going to learn how to multiply negative fractions. Right? Negative fractions. Here I have 3 over 4 times negative 7 over 9. Right? So what is that going to give me? What do you think? 3 over 4 times negative 7 over 9. Yeah. Right, which is 36 if you know your multiplication table, right? And then when I get here, yes. For the nines, I just do 10 minus the thing that you're multiplying it by. Say it again. Like if I'm multiplying by 9, if I get 4 times 9, it would be 40 minus 4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why I hear the finger thing. Why in your thing is there half cursive, half not cursive? I don't care. I just chose to do however I feel like it. There's no rhyme or reason, I just do whatever I want, right? So I have negative 21 over 36. Do I leave this like this? Uh, no. No, I'm trying to simplify that, right? What goes into 21 that goes into 36? Seven. Seven? No. no. What goes into three? Three, three right? Three. three. How do you know if a number is divisible by three? Remember I told you, you oh. add the digits, right? Two plus one is what? Three. So therefore, it's divisible by three. Three plus six is nine, so you know Three goes into twenty-one, and three also goes into twenty-six, right? All right. So now you go divide this by three, you get negative seven because it's a negative. Don't forget that, and then you get twelve here, right? So it should be negative seven, twelve. Now, let me ask you a question. If you were to do do the same thing with this fraction, before you even multiply, right? What would you want to do to make this a lot simpler? I have 9 over 12 times negative 2 thirds. I always want to make sure, can I simplify this fraction first before I even multiply? Can I do that? Yes or no? Yes, right? So what goes into 9, that goes into 12? 3, right? 3. So if I divide this by 3, what do I get? 3. Four. Anybody? So it becomes therefore negative, I don't forget my negative, right? 3 over 4 times negative 2 over three, right? Now, if you were in calculus, I would have taught you, you could just simplify this like this. But well, right now, I don't want to overwhelm you, right? You can simplify this and you're left with negative two or four. You can, you can do that, but let's go step by step, okay? So now, what do I do here? Negative three times negative two, that equals what? Negative six. Negative three times negative two, that equals? Six. Remember, a negative times a negative becomes a positive, positive right? So I get six over 12, and I can simplify it by what? Six, six right? Divided by six again, so I get one half, all right? Now you guys can go ahead and try this one. Six over nine times negative three over 11.
Is that it? Can you simplify both sides? Um, both fractions? You can, if, but can you simplify this one? You think you can? No. No, right? But can you do this one though? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right, six over nine, we can simplify that. Can we? Two over three. Two over three, right? Because three goes into six, three goes into nine. So you have two third times negative three over 11. What does that give you? <coughs> Six over 33. Negative or positive? Negative six, negative six over 33. And then what? What well, goes into six, that goes into 33. Three, right? So you get negative two over 11, right? Again, let me show you something else that you could do. And if you are comfortable with it, you do it that way. If you're not, just do it a simple way, right? Now, if I had the same fraction, I have six over nine times negative three over 11, right? Here's what I would have done. Right? I know that three goes into this, right? I got two here and then three goes into nine, I have three. Are we good on that? I also know that these three and these three are gonna what? Cancel out, right? Three and I'm left with what? One, here I'm left with what? One. So now I have two times negative one over what? 11. So this is negative two over 11. Now some people, absolutely hate this goes this is too much for my head i don't like it you don't have to do it this way if you like the traditional way you want to just go your step by step i'm fine but if you feel like this is more comprehensible to you and you you want to do this by all means go ahead okay so i don't impose anything if you like this do it this way if you like this way do it that way all right now we're going to learn how to multiply mixed fractions isn't that fun <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't like mixed fractions? You're so mean. <coughs> How am I mean? Yeah. So your your laughs are a little like creepy. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a little suspicious. How is it suspicious? Because I'm laughing? <laughs> like that. Oh my God. You laugh yeah. like that. Like that. So how should I laugh? Like. <laughs> is that better? No. <laughs> it's a little bit better. Oh no, it's certainly not that one. <laughs> Not like that. No way. All right, so let's try this. Two, one third times two, five, seven, right? So if I want to multiply these mixed fractions, uh, let's figure out what we're going to do here. And then we're going to try this one too. Three, three, eight times two, one third. <gasps> All right. Yep. Yeah. Do you need your book to teach it? Do I need my Does book? Does your book tell you what to teach? Do you want me to tell you the answers? Um, yes. <laughs> she's, she's, she's making fun. You want to teach the class? Sure. Maybe. Thank you. All right, so. She won't do an evil laugh. So, <laughs> all right, so. There you go again. So how do I do this here, right? I'm going to turn this into what? A improper uh, fraction. First, right? This is not 25, by the way, this is 2, right? <coughs> so I want to turn this into an improper fraction, yeah. Can I do 2 times 2 and then multiply the fractions? Um, let's try to see if that works too. Okay. Right? Let's try it. Well, let's do it this way. 2 times 3 plus 1, correct? Is that is 7 thirds. 7 thirds. Right? And then 2 times 7... 14 plus 5, 15, 19 over 7, right? Now look here. I like easy stuff. I don't want to multiply these two first and then do it because I don't want to do that, right? Can I cancel out the sevens? Yes. yes, I can, right? So I'm going this way. I'm left with what? 19 over 3. Does that make sense? I know the answer. Right? 19 over 3. All right? And you can turn this into a mixed fraction if you want. You don't have to. Now let's try it, if you can do it the other way, two, one third, what she said. I don't know if you can, but we'll see, right? She said two times two is, what? Four, right? Mm -hmm. And then one and five, this is five over 21. Uh, let's see if you do it this way. Four times 21, that's 80, uh, 84 plus five, that's 89 that's a big one. over 21. No, we can't do it that way. You can't simplify it? No, we can't. So, I uh, hope hopefully nobody watches this and feel like what is he teaching? That's there's no way we can do it that way. Alright, we can. And put it out again in a little bit. 
So you have to multiply them. You have to turn them into improper fractions first and then simplify. All right? So let's try this here. 3, 3, 8, and then 2, 1 third. 3 times 8 is 24, right? 24 plus 3, 27 over 8. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 1, 7. So 7 third, right? Now look in here. Can I simplify this again before I even multiply it? Can I? Yeah. Yes. 3 goes into what? 27, right? How many times? Nine times, right? Three goes into 27. Nine times. We can do it this way. It will be easier, right? Nine times seven, if you know your multiplication is 63. 63 over, this is one here, this is eight. And then you're done because there's no number that goes into eight that goes into 63. Is there? No, right? So this is it. Okay, so this is how you multiply mixed fraction. You just first have to turn them into improper fraction and then multiply. Now what we're going to do is, now we're going to learn how to evaluate um, rational expression using multiplication. So, I want to evaluate one half times um, AB if a equals six seven and b equals negative four over nine. All right, so how do you think we're gonna solve this problem? I want you to evaluate it. What am I saying when I say evaluate? What does that mean? Solve. To solve it, right? To find the expression. So we know that the expression is what one half a b. What does that mean? One half a b. Times, right? It's a multiplication. So I'm going to substitute A by what? 6, 7. Six, 7 and B by? Negative 4, nine. Negative 4, 9. So we'll have, so it's going to be 1 half times 6 over 7 times negative 4 over 9. How many fractions do I have here? Three. Three, Three fractions, right? So we're going to do them two at a time. Like, I'm going to do these two together, and then whatever, whatever I get here, I'm going to combine it with this one, correct? Yeah. Right, so now, two, right, if I just single out these two here for now, right, two goes into what, six, mm -hmm. three. right, three times. So we're left with one over one times three over seven, so that is one, of, one times three is three, mm -hmm. one times seven is seven. seven. So that is three seven times negative four over nine, right? Now again, can I simplify this again before I multiply, yes? Is it fraction negative or just negative? No, the, well, the, the whole fraction is negative. So even if the numerator is negative, it still makes the entire fraction negative. Okay, it doesn't matter where. You can put it in the middle, you can put it on top, you can put it in the bottom, but preferably people like to keep it in the middle. Okay? Well, it doesn't matter where you put the negative. It's still a negative fraction. Now, if I have 3 over 7 times negative 4 over 9, right? What do I do here? Can I simplify the 3 and the 9? Yeah. Right, I can do that, right? The 3 is gone, so I'm left with 1. And here I'm left with 3, right? So now I have 1 times negative 4, which is? Negative 4. Negative 4. And then 7 times 3, that is? 27. 21, 21 right? And then this is my final result. There you go. So when you do the butterfly method too? Say again. When you do the butterfly method too? Butterfly method, which is? It's that. The one that I just did? No, we learned that last year. Okay, yeah, you can do that. You call that butterfly, butterfly method? method. Alright, I didn't know that it had a name. Butterfly method. All right. All right. All right. So what I want to do now is I'm going to give you some some stuff to work on on your own. Okay.